So ever wondered what a 100 megapixel image looks like up close? What it's like to edit those images in Lightroom and how they differ from full frame images in terms of dynamic range, noise in low light, and how Lightroom and Photoshop copes with the sheer size of these images? Let's find out. Now, if you saw my last video on street photography in London, you'll know that Hasselblad loaned me their X2D medium format camera to test out on my channel. But what you wouldn't have seen was what these images look like up close at the pixel peeping level and how utterly impressive they are when pushed to the limit in Lightroom. So check this out. I took this image as a snapshot really, more as a kind of location hunting exercise. And the scene was a high dynamic range image from blacks to white, as you can see from the histogram. We're losing detail just underneath the car and on the people sat on the wall. The histogram spike over here represents the sky where we're almost at whiteout. No real detail there and pretty boring. Now the first thing I wanted to show you was what this 100 megapixel image is like at the pixel peeping level. So you see this cursor that I'm hovering just over this guy's jacket. It's a tiny little magnifying glass which will blow up the image to 200%. And I'm going to place this tiny little cursor in this portion of the image just above that crowd way in the distance. And behind this cursor is that something I wanted to show you. Are you ready? And boom. Clear as you like, the Borough Market sign. And I want you to bear in mind that this image was taken at ISO 800. And this little square window represents the big window in the middle at 200%. Incredible detail on this 100 megapixel sensor. Let's look at what's on top of this roof. It looks like specks of dust. They're actually pineapples, clear as day mind-blowing detail. And at 100%, the level of noise present in the image, even at ISO 800, is barely noticeable. A 24 megapixel sensor would struggle to compete at ISO 800. Let's straighten up the image as the wall is looking a bit wonky. Using auto transform does the trick. And as you can see, the sky is pretty much a whiteout, hardly any detail present. So let's create a linear gradient mask and cover the sky portion of the image. And if we intersect the mask with yet another linear gradient, we can exclude the wall on the right hand side. Now we can target the highlights in the sky. We'll bring those all the way down and the dynamic range of the medium format camera reveals there is actually a lot of detail that is recoverable. And watch this, if we use the dehaze slider and push those up to about 60%, now we're seeing massive amounts of detail all from a virtually white sky. And we can bring down the texture in that sky as using lots of dehaze has a tendency to oversaturate colors so we can level out the saturation as well. And maybe a bit of contrast with the white slider and boom, we've got ourselves a sky. However, the shard is looking a bit overdone like a charcoal chicken. So creating a new mask, but this time we're gonna go with an objects mask. Let's just roughly paint over the building. Lightroom does a stellar job of selecting it and now we can recover the exposure some whites and after a few more color adjustments in Lightroom, a touch of contrast and some dodge and burn in Photoshop, we ended up with a pretty moody dark tones picture with massive amounts of detail. Now there is one big drawback when working with big file sizes like 100 megapixel images and that is save time. Saving a file in Photoshop with just a few adjustment layers takes 23 seconds. That's pretty slow for a decent computer like a Mac Mini M1 chip. You have to bear in mind, however, that these raw file sizes are 216 megabytes each, which is six times the size of my Sony a7 IV files. And the Photoshop files with minimal adjustments are one and a half gigabytes each. So we're playing in the big leagues now. Let's look at another image dealing with the 16-bit color. Taken handheld with a two-second exposure, which is pretty impressive in itself. The image stabilization on this camera was something else. F13 on the 21 millimeter lens and ISO 100. So let's zoom in to 100% on this news sign. Pretty amazing clarity for a handheld shot. And this is what you're viewing. The very top of the shard is razor sharp. But with a crop and enhancing the colors in the raw file, I was able to produce a sumptuous edit with the help from my preset pack, Nightlights preset. 
links in the description below. Here's that two second exposure in action with this Thames boat. And again, very clear text on the hospital building behind. Let's check out the dynamic range in this image. Again, handheld at 0.7 of a second, nice and clear at 100%. But I wanted to show you the hotel in the background, very little detail in these shadows, but using a radial filter on this area, I'm able to increase the exposure by a whopping three stops. Bit of contrast with the black slider and zooming into 100%, even with that three stop increase, there is very little noise from this adjustment. On a full frame camera, you wouldn't be able to get that level of shadow recovery without introducing a fair amount of noise. And speaking of noise, how does this camera handle ISO 6400? Pretty darn well, actually. Let's look at the camera settings for this image. 15th of a second, F19, which is what is giving us those beautiful starburst lens flares, and ISO 64, which is the native ISO for the Hasselblad X2D. We can see the 21 millimeter lens does an impressive job with this natural starburst. Let's zoom into 100% on this section of the image. A tiny spiral staircase, beautifully sharp. And the pointy buildings, razor sharp. One final street photography image. This was my final Lightroom edit. And zooming into 200%, the level of detail in the strands of hair is ridiculous. And again, the noise levels, even at ISO 800, is just not an issue, especially at 100%. So in case you're wondering, Hasselblad haven't sponsored this video, so I don't need to say any of this. I'm just so flippin' impressed by the quality of the images coming out of this camera that I wanted to share them with you. Anyway, that's your lot, team. Thanks for watching. Check out my Lightroom preset pack, which I'll link in the description below. Uh, give us a thumbs up, which helps to keep this channel afloat in the crazy YouTube world. And don't forget to subscribe for more photography content. I'll catch you next time.